The Tanzania-Uganda war that led to the overthrow of President Idi Amin was short and brutal. During the war, on March 24, 1979, Ugandan exiles and fighting groups met in Moshi, Tanzania. For the purpose of this conference we had just concluded here was to form the Uganda National Liberation Front. At the Moshi conference, it was decided that two governments would be in place. The political government, led by Professor Yusuf Lule and the National Consultative Committee, and the military commission, led by Paolo Muanga, deputized by Yoerim Seven. The Uganda National Liberation Army had two powerful factions. Museveni is Front for National Salvation, or FRONASA, and former President Milton Obotes Chikosi Malum, or Special Forces. By the time Lule was replaced with Godfrey Binaisa on June 20th, 1979, the international community had been pressuring the government to hold elections. The last election had been held 18 years earlier, so the government began sourcing for members of the Electoral Commission. Among others, the EC had Kosia Chichida as chairman, Vincent Sekono as secretary, Michael James Odongo as senior assistant secretary, Francis Xavier Lubanga as assistant secretary, and Magemeso Namungalu as information officer. Unfortunately, Binaisa, after doing all that, uh, he was ousted after he tried to replace Oito Jok. David Oito Jok was the chief of staff. The Mwanga led military commission, which replaced Binaisa on May 13, 1980, postponed the election to December 10. Many believed Mwanga was in fact opening the door for Obote's return. And on May 27, 1980, a few days after Binaisa's overthrow, Obote returned to Uganda to a triumphant welcome in Bushenyi district. My return will be a very symbolic uh, uh, signed in Uganda for national reconciliation. I played perhaps the biggest part in the removal of Amin. Four parties took part in the election. Uganda People's Congress, or UPC, Democratic Party, or DP, Uganda Patriotic Movement, or UPM, and the Conservative Party, or CP. John Baptist Kawanga, a member of DP, who went on to represent Masaka East constituency, remembers the euphoria of resurrecting his party's structures. DP's delegates conference was held at the International Conference Center. But then we were looking for the old Democratic Party supporters. And we found them all over. We would go and meet them and then encourage them to organize themselves into branches. The other parties were also campaigning. UPC held its delegates conference in what is now the Watoto Church building in Kampala, while UPM held its own delegates conference at Kampala's City Hall. What's wrong with you, Ugandans? You're always in crisis. You're always in trouble. What's wrong with you? Chichi. So we want to answer that question. There were problems, though. Some names were missing in the voters' register and only UPC candidates were allowed to stand in Lango sub-region, while there was little political activity in the West Nile district. One time Obote said, how many generals does, does Semogere have? <laughs> 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 and then the chairman of the electoral commission, who was you know, appointed, was a well-known UPC supporter. <laughs> The Commonwealth Observer Group jetted into the country and met the DP, CP, and UPM candidates in Kampala. They then traveled to Hoima, where Obote was campaigning. Polling day, December 10, 1980, finally dawned. The first disappointment was the late distribution of ballots in Kampala and distribution of the wrong ballots in western Uganda. Later that day, General Tito Kelo and Lieutenant Colonel Oito Jok met Sekono and told him to extend the voting time. So he told me to sit down and we draft uh, an announcement. He chose to go with me to Radio Uganda and that was the last time I ever saw my boss. Mr. Sekono fled into exile that afternoon. A month earlier, his personal secretary, John Musira, had been shot dead. 
At midday on December 11th, DP released a press statement claiming it had won the election with 66 constituencies out of 126. DP candidate got 983. I got into my land roof and went to the DP headquarters. I found that there was a lot of commotion there. Uh, the most interesting personnel I remember at that time was Adoko Nachon. He was there and he was announcing some. <laughs> and you know, Adoko Nachon was the, also the brother of Obote. He was announcing that they had won and so on. Paolo Mwanga issued a proclamation over Radio Uganda. The proclamation had been backdated to December 10th. And in it, he prohibited returning officers from announcing the results. They were to send the results directly to him, and he would declare the results or declare the election void. Muwanga's declaration was not open to challenge in any court of law. Whoever defied the proclamation was liable to a fine of 500,000 shillings or imprisonment for five years. So we went to face Paul Muwanga. He just told us, one power kawanga semogere, there was a so called day car, or in the Evinana Later that afternoon, the DP presidential candidate, Paul Kawanga Semogerere, told international media that the military commission was under pressure from the UPC. Either to keep the world ignorant of the defeat of the UPC, or worse still, to put pressure on him to nullify results which are in, in the field of the Democratic Party. That night, heavy gunfire engulfed Kampala for over an hour. Namungalu, who was at the International Conference Center at the time, suspects that that was the first time Tito Kelo was trying to stage a coup. According to government, <laughs> although I didn't believe it, they said soldiers were shooting because they were happy. <laughs> Poor results began trickling in on December 12th at about 2 p.m., with Namungalu first checking them and passing them on to the Secretariat for verification before they were announced on Radio Uganda. When the uh, 64th announcement, I mean, uh, uh, result came in, I called uh, the chief announcer and I told him, look here, by the virtue of this, U uh, UPC has won. The official results were declared by the military commission at the Nile mansions. Of the 126 parliamentary seats, UPC won 74 seats, DP 51 seats, UPM won one seat, and CP did not get a vote at any polling station. 4,899,146 voters turned out to vote. People gathered at Mr. Semogere's house especially our friends from Acholi, the, the members who had been elected and, what, and who had stood, said, why don't we go and make our own announcement? <laughs> but, but of course it was, it was impractical. Obote was sworn in as president on December 15th, 1980. The newly elected parliament met on December 23rd. The Democratic Party did not dispute the results. The leader of the UPM disputed the election results waged a five-year guerrilla war, and the rest is history. But going by the events that happened, one wonders if Uganda was ready for an election in 1980. To be frank with you, I think they, they should have given more time huh, to that election. Unfortunately, the military aspect remained. The question of how many generals you have, that at the end of the day you can only get power out of the barrel of a gun. And we have never fully recovered from that. Namungalu went on to become the chief news editor of Uganda Television and Radio Uganda. He's now retired and is also an author. Kawanga is still a practicing lawyer. One thing they agree on is that in the 1980 election, Ugandans were at their most patriotic. 
a patriotism that has almost disappeared today. Back then, everyone wanted the best for the country, which was just emerging out of a war. Gillian Nantume, NTV.